Welcome to the Knock Talk. I'm your host, William Hall, broadcasting live out of Kingsland, Texas, USA, with another episode of Two Guys Exploring Christianity with a dear friend of mine and a dear friend of all of yours, of course, Greg, the man McBride. Welcome back. Don't smoke crack, mm. McBride. <laughs> Mr. Hall? Yes, sir. <laughs> what are those... What are those rhythmic emanations coming from your square <laughs> box there at your studio? That's funny. Even though they are very rhythmic, I am unmoved by them. <laughs> and will remain unmoved by them for the entirety of this show. God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. That's funny. Well, welcome. Oh, hey, what? hey <laughs> welcome back, Greg. How are you? It's funny, man. I, I've never... I, I, I say it never ceases to amaze me. I get a phone call like right at start time, but it's actually not true. It just happens every once in a while. So, okay, so here we are. We are, um, this is not, well, I guess technically every week moving forward will be a continuation of the week prior because we're going to take in phone calls now. And uh, starting off with each show, most likely, which is what we're fixing to do now, uh, Greg is going to um, indulge in answering a few questions that came up in chat uh, yeah. from the last video. Okay, and okay. and this is also for everybody to know for this for the show in particular, because we have so many the scripture references that we refer back and forth. Uh, there will be two live airings of each of our shows. The first one will be the live live one, right? Uh, and the chat that goes along with that will all be you know it it all happens. Um, but because I have so much stuff that I have to add to the videos, the moment I edit a video, the first live viewing the chat the chat box disappears because it can only show up if I, if I leave the live video up. So, but since I'm editing it to add all the overlays and all the text, which you guys love so much, <clears throat> there isn't really a live chat. Including, with me, that. including me. Yes. <laughs> um, so, so the only way to develop another live chat, which people I'm getting a lot of positive feedback for people like reading the chat when they go back and see the videos. So I make a second live viewing of the show. Uh, usually the next day. So uh, we'll do the the main live one. The real live one would be Wednesday night, 7 p.m. like it is 9, uh, like tonight. And then the replay of the thing, which will have the edited version of the video, uh, should be, as long as I get everything done in time, Thursday night, the next night at 7 p.m. So that's, that's going to be the, kind of the goal. Uh, it takes a lot to get it there because it's about four to six hours to edit this stuff uh, and depending on what else is going on during the day. But that's going to be the goal that we'll try to stick with if possible. So right now I'm going to turn it over to Greg. And uh, Greg, feel free to go ahead and address some uh, some things you had, uh, comments from last okay. week. And while yes. you're doing that, I'm going to get the phone line set up. Okay. All right. So one of the comments last week, I'll, I have four of them that I'd like to address. Uh, one person said that I only concentrate on the contradictions in the Christian Bible, and there are just as many or more contradictions in the Hebrew Bible. And what I would kindly ask of the person that made that comment in the chat is, if you would please supply me with those contradictions in the Hebrew Bible. There are contradictions, apparent <laughs> contradictions, right. in the Hebrew Bible. And so I would just like to uh, have you send me those. There, there are no contradictions in the Hebrew Bible like what there are in the Christian Bible. It, the Christian Bible authors can't even know what day Jesus was crucified on. That's very clear um, in the Synoptics versus John. And you know we don't so, claim we don't claim that there are no errors in no, the, the, no, the, the the New Testament correct. does. I mean. Or at least they right. used to until they found out there were. Now they're saying, oh, they well, there might be. To. Yeah, but see, we don't claim that. So yes. Yes. it's really not up to us to have to defend that anyway. We know that they're there. Right, yeah. So yeah. They're, just, they're just not. And yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah the lady or the, the person said uh, they quoted um, uh, how we have to become like little children. And basically that I and William are stumbling blocks at the end of it. Uh, said we're stumbling box. She referenced Jeremiah chapter six. I'd like to just really quickly read that for context. Uh, I'll start at verse 11. And I am filled with prophecies of the wrath of Hashem. I am too weary to contain them. Pour this wrath onto little children in the street and onto the gathering of use for men and women alike will be captured the elders with the very aged, their houses will be turned over to others, their fields and women at once, for I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, the word of Hashem. For from the simplest of 
to their greatest people, they all exhort booty. From prophet to priest, all deal in falsehood. They relieve the impending disaster of my people by making light of it, saying, peace, peace, but there is no peace. Were they ashamed that they knew had committed that they had committed abominations, they will never feel shame. They will not know humiliation. Therefore, they will fall among the fallen. At the time I will punish them, they will stumble, says Hashem. Thus said Hashem, stand on the roads and see. Ask about the various paths of history. Which path is best? And walk on it. Find solace for your soul. But they said, we will not walk. I appointed watchmen over you who warned you. Hearken to the sound of the shofar, but they said, we will not hearken. Therefore hear, O nations, know, O congregation, the evil that is in them. Listen, O land, behold, I am bringing evil upon this nation, the fruits of their schemes, for they did not hearken to my words or my teaching. They rejected it. Why do I need frankincense that comes from Sheba or the aromatic cane from a distant land? Your burnt offerings do not find favor. Your sacrifices are not pleasant for me. Therefore, thus said Hashem, behold, I am putting stumbling blocks before this people and they will stumble over them, fathers and sons together, as well as neighbors and his acquaintance. They shall all perish. I would like to point out to the person that said that I am a stumbling block because I'm teaching what the Tanakh says. The people that stumble over the stumbling block of Jeremiah 6.21 are who? They are the children of Israel who did not hearken to the word of Hashem. That's the ones who stumble. People who are teaching you the Tanakh, teaching what the prophets of Israel said, are not the ones causing you to stumble. So please read the entire chapter of 6 of Jeremiah and understand the context of the stumbling block. Um, this one kind of hurt me because it said, why would someone join a religion and be a second class citizen? And I, I thought that I, and I apologize uh, if I made it seem like uh, a non-Jew was joining a religion that made them a second-class citizen. I believe if you go back and watch the video, I specifically said that you are not a second-class citizen, but you have a specific place and a role to play that is not Jewish, unless unless you fully join Israel, you can do that, but. I never ever meant to imply that a let's let's use the vernacular a Noahide is a second class citizen. I do not know of a rabbi who would teach that a non-Jew who worships the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a second class citizen. I I really don't. The last oh one other one um, one viewer said that I can't. I don't understand Parthenos because it can mean virgin, it can mean damsel, it can mean maiden, it can mean any number of things. That is my point. <laughs> when when the Septuagint, uh, w when the King James authors take the Septuagint, which renders Isaiah 7:14 as virgin, the Septuagint renders that as Parthenos. My point is Parthenos doesn't only mean virgin because when Dinah is raped by Shechem, she is also called a Parthenos. That was my point. The King James translators, the Geneva translators before them, simply chose virgin and inserted that. The, the word Parthenos does not only mean virgin. It can also mean a woman who has had sex. So that that is very clear. The last one, this is the most important one. Um, I am misapplying the scripture. I'm, I'm a very uh, pretty much live and let live type of guy. I, I don't get real upset about very much of anything. It would it would crush me to my soul if I miss 
misrepresented and misapplied the Hebrew Bible to you. My point in Deuteronomy 13, and I'm going to read it because this, please listen, because this is, this is vital. I was told that I misapply this and the last, the last state, well, William, do you have that? Do you have that actual is, statement? Uh, is that the one you we were talking about by that's by the, Bre- the very last one? H W W. Yeah. In, <clears throat> Let me put yeah. that up on your screen can, for can you. Can you? Can you? Yeah. Oh, you can pop it yeah. up on your screen. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You're the master clicker. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Let's see if I can. I forgot about that. <laughs> master Splinter Clicker. Yeah. There we go. Okay, that should be good to go right there. Probably wouldn't hurt if I zoomed in a hair too. So I... Okay, there we go. Beware of any who misapply scripture or misquote scripture, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Example, Deuteronomy 13. The instruction was beware of anybody that says they have a dream and influence you to worship an unknown God. Then you time that to Jesus, which is false. Jesus points to the Father, the God of Abraham, consistently. All of your so-called points are erroneous because you just change it around enough to make some kind of a point. Please, people, look this up for yourselves. Those that are falling away from Christianity are the ones with itching ears. They want to hear it the way they want to hear it. Remember in math, if you got one number off, it changes the whole equation. Don't sit back and just inhale all these false interpretations. Jesus is real. You know, the thing that really irritates me about that the most is he he just stumbled on himself. I mean, literally said... the reason it says the instruction was beware. Okay, it says of an unknown God. Of Tell him, unknown show God? me anywhere in the Old Testament where Jesus's name is mentioned. That is totally unknown. Correct. I'll shut Correct. up now. I'm okay. gonna shut he up now. He is an unknown God. He's I'm, an unknown God. But I want to make very clear that I did not misapply the scripture. I'm going to read it for you. The entire word that I command you, you shall observe to do. You shall not add to it. You shall not subtract from it. If there should stand up in your midst a prophet or a dreamer of a dream, and he will produce to you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes about of which he spoke to you, saying, let us follow gods of others that you did not know, and we shall worship them. And the person that wrote that comment stopped reading right there. I will guarantee you. Verse four, do not hearken to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of a dream. For Hashem, your God, is testing you to know whether you love Hashem, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul. Hashem, your God, shall you follow and him shall you fear. His commandments shall you observe and to his voice shall you hearken. Him shall you serve, and to him shall you cleave. And that prophet and that dreamer of a dream shall be put to death, for he hath spoken perversion against Hashem, your God, who takes you out of the land of Egypt and who redeems you from the house of slavery to make you stray from the path on which Hashem, your God, has commanded you to go, and you shall destroy the evil from your midst. If your brother, the son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, or the wife of your bosom, or your friend who is like your own soul, will entice you secretly, saying, Let us go and worship the gods of others that you did not know, you nor your fathers. From the gods of the peoples that are all around you, those near to you, those far from you, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth, you shall not accede to him and not hearken to him. Your eye shall not take pity on him. You shall not be compassionate nor conceal him. Rather, you shall surely kill him. Your hand shall be first against him. My point was very clearly made. 
you cannot worship a God that your fathers did not worship. I asked that question to a very prominent apologist on this show. Show me where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob worship Jesus. Right. The answer that I got, and it's the only answer I've gotten so far, is Genesis 15, 1, where it says the word of the Lord came to Abraham. That's it. That's the entirety of it. So the person who, who wrote the comment that we just read, I need, so, so I, I have been accused of misapplying, misrepresenting the scripture, saying things that it does not say. Okay, that's fair. Because you know what, I'm human and that might sometime happen to me. But I just read to you what it actually says. I know you stopped at verse 3, and you didn't get to the part where you, where you can't worship a God that your fathers did not worship. You said at the very end of your comment, Jesus is real. By that, I assume you mean that Jesus is the real Messiah. I do agree with you, by the way, that Jesus pointed to the Father. I, I do. I agree. And he, he did. He did. The claims of his godhood were made for him. I, I am absolutely certain of that. That's, that's irrelevant, though, because the church has taken that and run with it, and they claim Jesus is God. But I really need you now in the comment section to show me where, because I just read to you from the Tanakh, from the Torah, where what I said is clearly stated. Now I need for you to show me where it says that Jesus is real and where I misapplied the scripture. Thank you very much for your comment, and I, I will look forward to reading your comment. Yep, awesome. All right. All right, I got my venting done now, William. <laughs> that, that's good. We need to have that. We need to have that at the beginning of every show because there's going to people yeah. want to have it's better for them to have uh, a visual interaction so they can see and feel your energy um okay. when you're responding yeah. so it's actually quite handy and so uh that's that, right. that's a really good thing to have in the beginning of the show okay so with that said we'll go ahead and take our first caller caller you are live on the air Caller, you live on the air please tell us your name and where you're calling from sorry yeah this is i mean uh thanks for taking my call i just had a quick question uh on uh, in Jude 9, it talks about uh, Satan uh, arguing over the body of Moses, and um, I've been listening to you guys, and you know, it seems that his role is to do whatever God tells him to do. Um, is there anywhere in the Old Testament where it talks about this? So, the concept, you're, you're right, the concept, uh, <laughs> by the way, our, our introductory um, conversation Brian and I had was he, he used to be Christian and now he's basically atheist. Now, I, I definitely don't blame. Not, oh no 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 oh. no 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 sir. Not, oh. I, I'm kind of like undecided. <laughs> oh okay okay good good yeah, good. Yeah, That's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. So don't throw out the baby with the bathwater is what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so oh, yeah. no, I'm oh no, I'm leaning leaning more toward so, Judaism. Oh now. beautiful uh, but, beautiful. But, but I'm definitely trying to figure Wonderful. some things out here where I, I'm seeing and have have seen these problems with things for a while, um, and. You know, one of the big things in the church is, you know, when these things happen in life, bad things, and Satan is trying to do this to people and that, and you just wonder, okay, where does this story, is there any story about this in Moses, in uh, you guys call the Tanakh, the, you know, we call sure. the Old Testament? Right. Um, is there something, and what would the purpose of that be? I mean, why would God tell him to argue over <laughs> Moses has bought it for what reason, you know? I mean, so y yes, that's a that's a great question. It really is. I I applaud your. Are you still there? Yep. Your oh, study. I'm sorry. Yep. Go ahead. I forgot oh, to I forgot I, to turn Greg oh. up in his ear. My bad. Go ahead. You can hear him now. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I, Hi, Greg. I applaud your I applaud your study. Hi. So in, in the the place in Jude, we are instructed that the archangel Michael is disputing with Satan over the body of Moses. And I believe that the text is that the archangel Michael, who is the angel of Israel, dared not pronounce against him a railing judgment, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. And William will put that up on the screen. 
when when he edits it. And yes, I love when that. I edit it, it, yes, it's so good because then I know how far off it was from quoting the actual <laughs> what it said. <laughs> yeah, that that is the essence of what the the uh, the ninth verse of Jude is, and this is this is wholly unknown in in the Hebrew Bible. In the Hebrew Bible, okay. Hasatan. A created being is is simply one of God's angels who does God's bidding. But the author of the book of Jude is is simply perpetuating the idea of the Gnostic dualism. That's that's all he's doing here. There is Michael, the archangel Michael, one of God's very powerful angels, doesn't have to dispute <laughs> with with anybody over the body of Moses. Right. Uh, if if Hashem tells Satan, hey, don't screw with the body of Moses. He doesn't screw with the body of Moses. If he tells him, hey, pick up the body of Moses, he picks up the body of Moses. He does whatever Hashem says. Michael doesn't have to contend with him. So That's I, hope, I hope that answers your question. Let me put him back on. I just answered. I hope that answered your question there, brother. I really did, yeah. Good, um, good, good, good. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah, I have read this verse before, and... Um, and nice. That was awesome. I I did have one other question, a quick one. Go ahead. If that's go okay. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, how do I reconcile, you know, answered prayers as a Christian, like having a lot of prayers answered and things that I, you know, I couldn't manipulate it. I mean, but hey. I never really felt like I was praying uh, to Jesus. Hey, Brian. Hang, I always Brian. Hang on one second, if you don't mind. Caller, sit tight. I'll be right back with you. Okay. Don't okay. Hang, thank you. Don't, you bet. Don't hang him. Okay, Brian, is that you? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, continue on. So, so you asked you ask a question that is prevalent in 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 every religion in every religion. Who there is are answers that? to prayer? Every every single religion has answers to prayer. When yeah. we, in other words, there are. There, there are so many religions, and every religion has people who say that if it weren't for fill in the blank, I wouldn't be here. Okay, and that is that is probably true. <clears throat> in my own life, I have had more than one person tell me, if you weren't in my life, I would have committed suicide. Okay, wow. that's that that's been told to me multiple times. And I, I understand the difference, though, between me being a friend, being a confidant, being a, a rock of Gibraltar, so to speak, um, emotionally, spiritually, financially, to people who are hurting, that I have affected their... Uh, uh, I, I don't want to call it salvation because it's not salvation in the sense that Hashem saves us. But I, through my actions, they were saved from committing suicide or maybe from becoming an illicit right. drug user or any number of things. <clears throat> it's not that I did. It's not that I had any power to do that. It's simply right. that I was there and was what they needed. Religion, all religions, well, virtually all religions, offer some type of sense of community, some type of sense of higher purpose, some type of a sense of belonging. And when you, when you get in that, you draw from that. And there are miracles in every religion. Uh, verbatim there are miracles there are answered prayers the the big difference between every other religion and the worship of the god of abraham isaac and jacob is that there is no actual salvation spiritual salvation and spiritual cleansing found in those other religions you can go to Fatima, Portugal, and you will see thousands of people flocking to a Virgin Mary statue that occasionally weeps. You know what? I think it really does. I, I really think that sometimes it weeps, mm. and that's kind of miraculous. Does that mean that 
it's really God, or like the prophet Moses tells us in chapter 13 of Deuteronomy, which I just read, <laughs> Hashem is testing you. He's testing you to see if you'll be loyal to him and only him and not to the gods, the little lowercase gods of this world. Right on, right on. That's, I think it's really said best because it is true. I mean, Hashem answers, you know, prayer. I mean, he answers prayers in every religion you could think of. Hindu, Buddhist, Correct. you know, Islam, they all have yeah. stories and miracles and answer prayers. So it's just, yeah. they answer. But one, but the one of the confusion, the confusion is, a lot of these other religions have idol worship. You know, I'm I was praying to God, not to an idol. Here's the thing: you the know, Creator of the universe, everybody, every human being on the planet is His creation. Everything right. He created, and He cares about. Whenever, you know, I, I tried. I described this one time. We had a neighbor down the street, uh, and the neighbors really aren't that nice. They're kind of. But one of the kids <laughs> out there was screaming bloody murder. And man, my heart jumped like, and I started panicking for that child. And I took off running down the street trying to help that child. That's how God handles, that's how God is. He's such a compassionate God with everybody that when somebody's really crying out, he, he will answer. It doesn't mean that you're following the right God or, or that you're living the right life. It just means he's compassionate, you know, and he will answer prayers, you know. So, hey, absolutely. we'll Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. You bet, man. Help All you right. have a great night. Thank you for your call. Okay. All right, give me one second here. I got to grab the right one. You know, you said something okay. earlier that was really I thought was really good too, and it was uh, we were talking about um, the contradictions in the in the um, Hebrew scriptures. Um, and mm -hmm. for me, the one that that somebody brought up was uh, how uh, King David was moved. God moves his heart to number of the Israelites, and the other one said Satan did it. But Satan yeah. works for God. And so to right. me, to me, that's not a problem. It'd be like me. Uh, no. My son told me one day last a couple of years ago when I was working construction, he goes, "Dad, Home Depot called and said that your order's ready." And I'm like, "Okay, cool." And that was true. And uh, actually, it wasn't Home Depot. It was actually Teresa who works for Home Depot. For okay, okay. Yeah. now think but about that for a second. Now that may sound silly to you, but that is so exactly how this is. That's exactly you know what I mean? how there is no contradiction right. of Hashem moving David to number Israel and Hasatan moving David to number Israel. Right on. So, Okay, uh, apparently I, I didn't write this one down, so we're going to uh, call your lab on here. Please tell us your name and let us know how you're not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you guys know that game, Dance Dance Revolution at the arcades? I'm a pro at that game. I play it all Why? Because I love that game. I like when the soundtrack goes <laughs> perfect. I win Just that like game. the music before Tanakh talk. Yeah, exactly. I love that game. All right, bye guys. Bye. Later. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That was that was his question. That that was just that he was calling to say hi. I suppose that's cool. Oh, All okay. right, okay. I think we got Dwayne back. Dwayne, welcome back, my brother. What's uh, what's on your mind? Hey, um, get you off of speaking. Okay, I'm just talking to the phone. No, I, I was calling because when I was in school and stuff, I went and talked to the rabbi at the uh, University of Texas. I think his name was Kerry Baker. Back, this was back in the back in the nineties, right? And I had asked him questions because I wanted to know what Jewish people actually believe. But in general, most Christians don't care what Jews believe. I, when I asked him, I said, "You know, Jews believe that the Sabbath day is Friday, and that's what they've always worshipped." And, and but it seems in Christianity, they don't believe and accept anything taught by Judaism. Right? They they don't believe that God is one. They believe that He's a Trinity. They believe that he sent a man, Jesus, as himself on the earth. They 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 switch the Sabbath day. They don't follow the Jewish dietary laws. It, it's like the G Jews say that the covenant with God is eternal, right? Yeah. They tell them that it's no, it's over with because yeah. Jesus came, so it's different. And I was just saying, why is it that Christians claim to worship the same God? But that same guy just totally duped the Jews. Dwayne, you know what? The, the way the way that you piece this together is so um, eye opening for me. Looking back on my past Christian life, it's like because I would say that I love Jesus and I love God, but if you if you if, if me and you and Greg right now wrote down between the three of us just a list of all the things that God loves, 
and handed me that list, that one list as a Christian. And I would look at that list. I'm like, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. How can I say I love God when I don't like anything about him? That's that's kind of what you're saying. And it's so true because they don't like the holy days. They don't like they don't like keeping the Sabbath day. They don't like all the laws. They don't like the fact that Jesus was Jewish. I mean, that's it's so weird to actually even hear that. Mm-hmm. And if that that's how I was. So tell us more about it. What, what's up with your thoughts, Greg, no, on that? No, 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 the only thing oh. I was just saying is, is that because I asked my son that he's where he's in the Church of Christ, and I said, look, the okay, like I think I brought up last week, people don't know. But it was just saying the God of this world has blinded you or God will send you strong delusion because you had no love for the yeah, truth. Right. And I said, then how would anybody be saved in Christianity if we're all being deceived? And he said, oh, Correct. except for those that had the love for the truth. So how are the ones who have right. the love for the truth being distinguished from those who are being intentionally deceived and blinded? Right. There, that's, there's a that's lot of confusion a great in there. It's Yes. It's it's indiscernible. It's indiscernible. This is yeah. this is part of what. <laughs> so I I my dad doesn't watch the show because he's even less computer literate than me. <laughs> so I I have conversations with my dad still uh, about about religion, and I I noted to him famously in in John chapter six where. You cannot choose Jesus. According to the right. text, you right. yourself, you can't choose him. Only the Father can draw you to Jesus. And my dad said, yeah, I believe that. I said, well, what about the people that God doesn't draw? Do they go to hell? Well, uh, you know, what's, what's the answer to that? And this, this all dovetails in with Paul's great mystery Every, every cult has mysteries that are only revealed to the very upper echelon people that lead the movement. Paul is no different. Paul can't figure out, since, since, since Jesus didn't fulfill any, not, and I, you can make comments on this, you can send me emails, I will boldface say that Jesus did not fulfill a single messianic prophecy. Not one. You can feel free to show me how I have misapplied the scriptures here. Send me emails, send me chat. Paul doesn't have any choice. All of a sudden, Jesus dies. Um, N.T. Wright famously, N.T. Wright is a brilliant Christian theologian, by the way. Um, he's British, and he he came up with one of the big fixes here, and he's really the first major apologist to articulate that, oh, nobody expected Jesus to die. It's brilliant in its simplicity, and that's his name is N.T. Wright. He wrote a book that's about that thick, and... So, but Paul has to come up with, how do we do this? Nobody expected Jesus to die because in the Hebrew Bible, the Messiah doesn't die. We are explicitly told that he lives in Jerusalem forever. He doesn't die. So Paul comes up with what every classic cult comes up with, and that is hidden or Gnostic knowledge that only he gets privy to. Well, any person can take a Hebrew Bible and read everything that will happen when the Messiah comes. Literally everything that you need to know. And everything is observable. You don't have to wonder. There is no mystery. But Paul does that because he doesn't have any choice. He has to go to a fallback position because his Jesus did not fulfill the Hebrew prophecies. So then we have to invent a second coming. We have to invent special knowledge. We have to invent um, basically uh, trademarked <laughs> information, so to speak, uh, that only Paul knows. And guess guess who you got to go to to get the real skinny on Jesus? Well, you got to go to Paul. 
you can't go to Isaiah. No, no, you can't go to Isaiah. You got to come to Paul. You can't go to Jeremiah. Nope, 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 nope. Jeremiah don't know. Paul's, I know. That's that's the that's how he plays it, and he doesn't have a choice. So, sound good, Wayne. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you calling in. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you, you bet. You bet. You sorry about that. I'm not too I hope bad. nobody calls me up and asks me what <laughs> NT stands for in NT right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I don't know. That's funny. I think was it was it you? I think it was you. Speaking of, of, of abbreviations, you or somebody. Got a new pair of headphones, and I said, "What brand are they?" I said, "They're, oh. they're L- LRs." I was like, L- "I've never or RLs." I'm like, "I've never heard of that LRs. before." And they were right, left, you turkey. <laughs> that was me. That's what I thought. <clears throat> that's your that's your type of humor. I like that. All right, good deal. All right, <laughs> call it here live. What's up, Rev Robbins? Talk to us. What's up? Hey guys. Hey, how are you? Um, uh, I don't think I've had the pleasure of speaking with uh with Greg before, but it's it's an honor. I hope you're doing well, sir. I, I am. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Um, so, I, so what I wanted to ask you guys was, um, and, and you were so you were in the church for a long time. My guy was. Mm-hmm. Jesus says in um, in Matthew twelve, he's he, he one of the big one of the big things he's talking about there um, is where he, he where he says the phrase and he says that the house divided amongst itself can't stand and. If I mean, I, until I got out of Christianity and, and like actually looked at it on the outside, I mean that verse is the epitome of Christianity because there's like what what is there over fifteen? There's, uh, there's several thousand different sects of Protestantism, and then there's Correct. subsects in those sects, and then. <laughs> That like like there's Correct. there's nothing but division in Christianity and and it's like everyone believes that their way is the true way and everybody else is going to hell and like it's it, like the like the Protestants don't like the Catholics the 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 uh, 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 the Pentecostals don't like the Baptists the Baptists don't like the Presbyterians Presbyterians don't like the Lutherans I mean there's so much division and it's like this house is. Uh, it's going to fall apart eventually because there's so yes. much division in there, and like nobody, like everybody says that my Jesus is my way and not your way. I mean, what do, like, what do you guys think about that? Like, is that just, is that just because it's? I mean, is that the, the essence of why uh, Christianity mm-hmm. is, is not like why why Jesus wasn't the true God because he he can't keep his people in order or, what do you think? Well, well, it's. It's not that he couldn't keep his people in order, so to speak. It's that he brings up any time that you go against the word of Hashem. Rev, I'm going to hang up now. Tune in for your answer, okay? Thank you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Any time that you go against the word of Hashem, you find yourself in heap big trouble. And that's that's what the New Testament does. Not only does the New Testament simply change the Hebrew Bible, as I've demonstrated over and over again. You know what, William? I had a, I have still to this day not received a single email, and I don't think I've ever seen anything in the chat, where anybody challenges me when I simply read from the Christian Bible and read from what it says in the Hebrew Bible. There's nobody has ever done that yet. And so if you change it, it's done. I was told, um, because I was in the Church of God Weinbrenner branch, and they split with the Church of God Anderson, Indiana branch uh, 80 years ago, 100 years ago. Who knows? And who knows over what? I was told that in the that being in the Church of God was not real. I was told by a senior person in the Lutheran Church that you had to be a Lutheran in order to go to heaven. And not not only a Lutheran, but you had to be a Lutheran of the Missouri Synod in order to go to heaven. This person was absolutely, absolutely serious. Well, I just happened to know a little bit about the history of churches and uh, the history of the Missouri Synod, Lutheran Church, 
And I, I knew that that synod was not even established until the eight, early 1800s. And so I asked this person, I said, well, who could go to heaven then before the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church was founded? <laughs> and the, the, the blank look on the person's face was stunning. When we become involved, when, when we go away from the Hebrew Bible, when we wander into Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Rosicrucian, all those other things, we lose, we begin to lose our connection with our creator. And then we don't think real clearly. I'm positive we don't. Because when I, I was still in the church, but I was, Hashem was making me think. And even when I was in the church, he was teaching me his Bible. And the, again, the look on that person's face was stunning. Now, I knew that person for years after that statement. We never, ever talked about it again. That person remained in the Lutheran Church, and I don't think he ever left. But he wouldn't confront that question. But in the, in the denominational churches, you are taught that this is the correct denomination. Mr. Husty, who is on this show, he's, he's involved in a sect of Christianity that doesn't believe Jesus is God. Uh, okay, wow, that's, uh, you know, and, and uh, we'll, we'll still do something with him eventually here, but, but and my, uh, part of my question is, well, then what is it? You know, if, if you don't have a God in your religion, what, what's the point? We had another so, guest on the show who believes both that God, that Jesus is God, and he also believes that Jesus isn't God. <laughs> So, so we don't believe that the Son is the Father, right? We believe that these are separate persons. Yeah, well, we would argue that Jesus is Yahweh. So, so, so we don't believe that the Son is the Father, right? We believe that these are separate persons. Yeah, well, we would argue that Jesus is Yahweh. So... <laughs> I, 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 sorry, man. This is, I, I had this that's is, true this though. This is absolutely true. Absolutely so true. I I love this because th I'm taking this from a from a Christian. Um, this reminds me of the medieval iron workers placard outside of his shop where he plied his trade and the 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 advertisement for his business was all types of fancy twistings and turnings done here. <laughs> wow. And that right. is what that <laughs> is what the Christian Bible seeks to do with yeah. the with the Hebrew Bible. And Make no mistake about it, you are worse off, your soul is worse off if you're engaged in idolatry than if you are just pretty much living your life. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just that's just a fact. You, you just cannot hurt. And make no bones about it, Christianity is idolatry. You are worshiping, and I've... I've gotten emails from people, well, we don't really worship Jesus, really. Okay, well, who's on the picture in the front of your church? Yeah. Uh, oh, exactly, yeah. Right, you're right. worshiping Jesus, and you're praying to Jesus. Well, we say Father at the beginning, and then we say in Jesus' name at the end. Okay, so I, mm -hmm. I, kiss, I kiss Hashem here, and then I kiss Jesus here. Right, right. If I did that with my wife, I'd be divorced. That's exactly you know? right. So, yeah. so you can't have it both ways. You either worship Hashem, and you follow the prophets, or you don't follow the prophets, but you learn from the prophets of Israel and from their teachers who are the rabbis, or you don't, one of the two. And you're better off to be, I mean, I hate to say it, because I don't ever wish this on anybody, but you're almost better off to be like agnostic than to, than to worship someone wholeheartedly who's not God. The, the reason that the pig is the most vile creature in in Judaism is because it exhibits traits of a clean and an unclean animal. So a, a pig has a cloven hoof, but it doesn't have a rumen. And so it is it's it's both. And for that reason the pig is reviled. So Christianity I and I one time <laughs> 
I sent a text message to a rabbi when I had a eureka moment. I said, oh, Christianity is the pig. Mm -hmm. And he said, now you got it. Now you got it because Christianity seeks to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on this side and then worship Jesus on this side and then worship the Holy Spirit over here in the Pentecostal movement. And and that's that's what makes it so vile and so so entertaining and so intriguing and that's why there's well over a billion people on the face of the planet that adhere to it william do you remember what moses told what hashem told moses it would be in six of deuteronomy about how big israel would be do you remember that this you would be small small yes yeah. yes you'll be small right. you'll be small so if you wake up next weekend and you're a member of the largest religion on the face of the planet <laughs> maybe you should rethink what religion you're in because hashem very clearly says and to israel you would have been a great nation if you would have just followed my torah you'd be a great nation nobody would threaten you you'd be the dominant you'd be the superpower but since you didn't trust me and you didn't keep my torah now you're going to be small. Yeah. Well, Jesus said so, this, Jesus said the same thing. He said, "Narrow is the gate that leads to life, and and, and very you, few that find it." So, yeah. just by that confession of Jesus alone, Christianity cannot be true because cannot they are the largest. Be, yeah. But but yeah. yet, what is what you were in the church? What is the mark of success in a Christian church congregation? What, what do you think? Oh, am what, I on to you, William? What was the question? What, Sorry. what is the what is the what is the main um, attribute in a what's what's the what's the biggest goal in a Christian church? Well, for, for the me, congregation to do what? The speak in tongues was my big thing. Well, that was okay, one of them. yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, but <laughs> every preacher wants more people. Come grow with yeah, us. They, they want, yeah, with they us. want to help expand yeah, the church. We want yeah. more people, and we, we need to build on to this building. We, have we a, got so many parents. We have a church in Marble Falls right down the road from, this, from us here, and it's a, it's a really big church. It's not a mega church, but it's a big church, and no joke, their sign literally says, no rules, just Jesus. If that doesn't draw mm -hmm. people in. Oh, my. Nothing. Yeah, that should really nothing. cause you pause when you see that. Yeah, right. um, I remember uh, there's one in Fort Wayne, and it says, uh, basically, this is the perfect place for him. All of our people are imperfect. This is a perfect place for you or something along that line. It Just, just admitting that you're going to be not righteous, <laughs> but but you're going to you'll fit in right here. Well. You could say that of any bar or any uh, any anything. You know what I mean. So, yeah. so thank you, said, you for your question. Yeah, and I you said I question. wanted. I'll, I'll add to your comment uh, because it is a bold statement to say that Christianity is the pig. One one reason why I see it that way also is because um, even even in Judaism, the Midrash teaches that of all the unclean animals, the pig is the worst of them all. Uh, and the reason why is because um, it does have split hooves, and that's a sign of a clean animal. Um, mm -hmm. But all the clean animals, they basically they they lay down with their hooves tucked underneath them, you know, not mm -hmm. like not like I just did like a yeah. like bat. But the pig lays down with them <laughs> sitting out in front of him, as as if to advertise, say, "Hey, I'm clean," but he's not clean. And so, and that's yeah. kind of how it feels like messianic. Christians and Christianity was like, no, we're the real Jews right here. We say, look, at we're the real Correct. Jews. But then you go back and we're look at that Jews. list of all the things that God loves, and they don't like any of them. So no. to me, no. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. On okay, we'll yeah. take another caller. Caller, you are live on the air. Please tell us your name. Where are you calling from? Hey, guys, this is Brian. How you doing? Welcome back, Brian. Go ahead. Good. So, yeah, my question is about uh, Genesis 3, verse 15 where it says uh, God will put enmity between um, the serpent and the woman, between her offspring and his offspring. Uh, he will crush your head and he will strike his heel. So uh, Christians will claim many different things. They'll say 
This is Jesus' death. This is his resurrection. This is Jesus beating the serpent, beating Satan. Um, but we see that, you know, people still sin today. Uh, people still have their evil inclination today. And so many different things. Um, can Greg, can you just talk about Genesis 3.15, what this really means, and sure. how Jesus did has no part in this at all? Cool. Okay, I can thank I you can for your question. That for go, you. go ahead, thank hang up now and give yes. your answer. We've got we okay. that we're running out of time, but we do have another caller on, so we'll probably go ahead and answer this question, and we'll go ahead and take one more after this. Now it'll be the last question for tonight. So okay, go ahead. So, so your question is in in Genesis three fifteen, where we are told that the that the that Hashem will place the enmity between the seed of the woman and between the serpent, and uh, the serpent. You, the, you will strike his head. The serpent will will bite at your heel. So, the serpent is unique among the animals that Hashem created. The serpent can speak. This is this is this is mostly lost on people in the church because this this serpent animal can speak, and this serpent walks upright. And even today, serpents have vestigular legs in their in their in their serpent body, like in their There's skeleton, the vestiges or vestiges of yeah. legs. Right. So the serpent walked, and the serpent is is cursed by Hashem. And Christians take that it says seed, and that that means that there's just one person coming from that seed. If I could, I would like to draw you to um, another place. Uh, we will go to Genesis 16.10. Okay. This is long after the serpent. Genesis 16.10. And the messenger of Hashem said to her, this is to, um, to Hagar, the messenger said to her, return to your mistress and humble yourself under her hand. And the messenger of Hashem said to her, I am going to increase your seed greatly and be too numerous to be counted. All right, that's, that's 1610. Uh, we're going to go to... 2460. <clears throat> and this is speaking of Rebecca. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Let our sister become the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and let your seed possess the gate of those who hate you. And this is the same so Hebrew I, word Zerah, right? This is the, the exact same, same okay. Hebrew word. Okay, this good. is the exact same Hebrew word. It's like it's like me saying there's a flock of sheep and what I mean is one sheep. That's ridiculous. Or if I if I say my neighbor has some seed corn and I just mean that he has one kernel of seed. <laughs> right. So the Christian the Christian contention in 315 is oh it's got to be the, the seed of woman well that's got to be a virgin birth and that can only mean one one offspring coming out of that seed. So what I just demonstrated to you is so easy for anybody to do. I mean ridiculously easy for anybody to do. You can just read in context what this means because there are three places here that talk of the seed of woman, and two of the places refer to tens of thousands of offspring, and there is nobody that thinks that Rebecca got pregnant as a virgin, is there? There's nobody that thinks that Hagar got pregnant as a virgin, is there? Of, of course not. That's not, any, that's not a teaching of the church, but for the church to be consistent, they would have to teach that Hagar and Rebecca, or and Rachel, which was it, Rachel or Rebecca? Uh, what, which in, in, 20, in 24, 
they would also have to be virgins. And where it says that there are really tens of thousands of offspring, well, what that really means is there's only one offspring. Do you, do you get my point? Do you see how right. the Hebrew Bible is written to where if you will just investigate it, you will learn the truth. Yeah. And that's the truth here. All, all Genesis 3.15 is saying is that the serpent that could speak, okay, and he could walk. He was, he was probably the, the highest form of creation among the animal world. But since he committed this act, his offspring will now walk on their, slither on their bellies and will only strike at our heels. Where is the most likely place for you to be bitten by a snake, William? On your, your body. On your heel. On your heels. That is number yeah. one. And it's number one because of Genesis 3.15. It doesn't mean a virgin giving birth. Yeah. Uh, 3,000 years, 3,500, 4,000 years in the future. And if you're going, and, and to further that, if you're going to attack a snake that's on the ground and you're standing next to it, what part of his body you're, are you going to stomp on? <laughs> his, his head. <laughs> if you, if you aim for of the course. tail, then you probably don't need to be sharing our <laughs> oxygen. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's good. Yeah. Oh man. I hope, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, and that's good. All yeah. I do, all I do is give you context. That's all I do. Yeah, but that's good. Uh, just remember 16 and 24 of Genesis, it says the same thing converted concerning people that no Christian makes the contention that they are virgins and only have one child. Yeah. So awesome. Okay. Right. Final caller. Welcome to the show. Please tell us your name. Where are you calling from? Hi guys. This is Patrick Pease from uh, Casa Grande, Arizona. Hey Patrick, go ahead with your question. Right. Well, uh, I just wanted to hear you guys talk a little bit about the, con the Jewish concept of grace versus the Christian concept of grace. And, because, and the reason I'm asking is because when I hear apologists talk about it, they, they seem to behave as though Christianity invented the concept. Ooh. So I just wanted to mm -hmm. get your, your uh, listen to you guys talk about it a little bit. Okay, cool. Go ahead and hang on now, too, if you answer. Yeah. So I find What's it very the... interesting because, the, I mean, the, the simple definition between the two that I've always heard is, you know, grace is getting blessings that you don't deserve, and mercy is not getting punishment that you deserve, right? That's um, and yeah. so, and if that's true, then that's always been present with Hashem. Hashem has blessed people that you know, and 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 like bypass their sins. That's that's right. not a new thing, Greg. Right. So the 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 word that we render as grace, you will read in your King James Bible, especially in an early one. It will say favor. And it will spell it F A V O U R. Uh, that's how that's how it will render. And favor uh, is simply, uh, or grace is simply unmerited favor. Who is the first person that we read about in the Bible that receives grace? That would be Noah. Noah received grace or unmerited favor. Noah received grace in the eyes of Hashem. Now, was there any Christianity when Noah was walking the face of the earth? No, <laughs> there, there was not. No. But yet Noah, no. Noah received Re grace. Great. At chap that'd be chapter 6, I believe. Of, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It's a great chapter point. 6, I believe, of Genesis, yeah. So when, when Noah receives grace, uh, one thing that... In the Christian church, and this is, I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to paint with a broad brush here, but this is, this okay. is very endemic of the Christian church. The God, and this comes to us from Marcion, which went way back to the very foundations of Christianity. That is that the God of the Old Testament is harsh and brutal. Jesus. He's the nice God. He brings, he's, my gosh, he's the one that scoops up that little lamb, you know, and what, remember, you've all seen the pictures of Jesus carrying that little you lamb that got lost, and he's, he's bringing it back to the fold. Well, the God of the Old Testament would have probably just abandoned that lamb and let it be eaten by the wolves. That is, that is how Christianity views 
the Christian grace that it's that it's the good grace. It's the good good. There's there's no grace in the Hebrew Bible, even though the very first mention is in Genesis chapter six with Noah. So don't get this. This is the problem we have when and especially for us who came out of the church, because we never learned grace slash favor is the Hebrew word chamosh, chamush. I can't remember what the Hebrew it starts with. A C-H, for, for, I think. for what word? For grace, um, I can't remember. It's. <sighs> I'll look. What it is it? I look at. Okay, I, I know okay, it here, yeah. but well, since you suggested yeah, that know, in my head, it, my my know, brain is derailed. This so is, this is how it works, and this is why it's hard to do a live show. By the way, for for viewers that watch, it's hard to do these because you're you're instantly it looks, on the spot. It looks like and, it looks like Hain, actually. Okay, is it is it does uh, it start so, with a C H in English? It, well, yeah, well, it is. It's a, it's a het nun, uh, het final nun. So okay. so chain, okay. or yeah, yeah. Hain, I, that's like what that. I my he, remember. My Hebrew is like that. My Hebrew is a little bit better than my dancing skills. <laughs> but so so this this idea of this idea of the grace of Hashem just. It permeates us. It, it has to. We we are so um, so dependent on him. I'm, I'm dependent on him for the rain that falls. I'm dependent on him for the crops that grow. I'm dependent on him for everything. And he's like this. He's like this guy who's constantly putting out the money <laughs> right. to, to make sure that we're okay. And then we turn around and. Flipping the bird, you know, but yeah. he still keeps doling out the money. You know what I mean? Because he loves us so much and he created us so much in his image. And he so wants a relationship with us that he continues to to give us just virtually unbounded grace. And that unbounded grace will continue in the world to come. There is zero question about that. You will not spend your eternity in hellfire and brimstone and yeah somebody touching your tongue with a piece of water on the end of their finger you know ironically ironically the the story about you know the the visual about jesus carrying the lamb and stuff like that right there um Mm -hmm. there is a story actually in the midrash about moses with the same thing and that God chose him because he was willing to leave the flock to go to rescue this one leftover. So if really? anything, Christianity yeah. stole that from, you know, from okay, the stories yeah. of Tanakh yeah. anyway. So if yeah. you think about it, so right. well, cool, man. Well, I'll tell you what, Greg McBride, McBride, <laughs> slow ride and the ride. <laughs> slow <ride>. <laughs> so, uh, well, it's been, it's been a full show. Really enjoyed all of the, uh, Oh my, yes, it has. Yeah. Oh, Travis Kruger, yep. he's he's responding. He's, he he responded with Chesed, but that's kindness, not grace. But that's still, I think Chen or Chain is is grace, and kindness would be Chesed, and that may be the word yep. you might be thinking of. So Chesed, C H E S E D. Yeah, that'll be that's what? that'll be kindness, right? Which is kind of kindness, the same okay. thing. As, I guess you could say that'd be the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Chesed. That's what that's the word I was trying to remember. So chesed. you would you would I say remember. it with a with a H or a like a hissing cat. <laughs> Chesed. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> cool, man. That's so cool. Guys, so. it's been fun. Uh, you'll 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 see each week. Like I said, if you tune in live, you'll get that you'll get a chance to watch this show twice each week. The the first time of its airing and the second time of the replay, so that I can actually get chat back into it again. So because people like that. So guys, thank okay. you for tuning in. And Greg, you're amazing. We love you, and we can't wait to see you, you again uh, next week. So you guys have a great week. And Chag uh, for the rest of your Sukkot. Yes, I mean. All right. Thank you. Take care. Right. Bye. Hello, my dear friends. Hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website, tanakhtalk.com. T-A-N-A-C-H-T-A-L-K.com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanakh Talk. Shalom.
ויתור זו הגדולה, השאיפה. 